As Bucks fans know, Dante DiVincenzo has emerged as an important part of the Bucks rotation this year. The second year player adds value in different ways, and it's not unusual for him to close games. So today I want to highlight his value as a smart and aggressive role player. Let's get to it. Let's start with his defense, and he makes a great impact with his rotations. He's very quick to react to a drive and step up when needed, and here he makes a crisp rotation. He's particularly good at helping the helper. Here, notice how he's guarding a cutter, but he never turns his back, so when Lopez goes to double the ball, he makes a precise rotation to cover the dunker spot. The very next play he does the same thing. As soon as George drives it, he moves in synchronization with Connaughton on the help, and then he closes back out to Lou Williams, who travels. His feel for the game can't be taught, and it allows him to adapt to specific scenarios. So here if weak side help is needed, it's typically the low man who would help first. Matthews is the low man here, but the way he's guarding Van Vliet says, I'm in no position to help. Dante recognizes this, so when the switch on top is late, Look how Dante is already rotating from the opposite wing to help. His anticipation is instant, and this should have been a layup. And not only is he quick to help, but he's an athletic player who can break up plays once he gets there. And here he stops the lob to Davis. His high motor paired with his combination of instincts and athleticism help him average 2.1 steals per 36 minutes, which is an impressive ninth in the NBA. Also, he's not an overhelper. Here when the drive is well contained by Giannis, he doesn't commit, instead staying home on the shooter. And sit back and enjoy this play, which really captures Dante's value. Are you kidding me? The hustle to sprint back, the open court speed, the instincts to cover the shooter? Not many players would have made this play. Another area where DiVincenzo excels is with his defensive fundamentals, and the area I'll focus on is how when defending, he has a great habit of keeping his arms up on contact. This is what I mean. Here defending the ball, notice how as he makes contact with Davis, both arms are up, and his hands are off. This reduces foul calls. Oubre gets left, but as Dante closes the gap and bumps Oubre off the spot, he gets his hands off. Hand checks and reach-ins are called tightly, and this helps Dante be a fairly low foul player according to cleaningtheglass.com. It won't guarantee a stop against the legend, but at least here, he doesn't foul. You'll also see this off-ball, and here he gets physical before some screens, but without risking a foul, and they call an illegal pick here. And he maintains his vertical arms at the rim. As Fox jumps into him, his arms are straight up, and it's a no call. This type of discipline isn't typical of young players, and here we see Ingram make a mistake. As Barnes spins into him, his left arm isn't straight up, and that'll be a foul every time. Try to notice this the next time you watch a game. It happens all the time. Booker's arm isn't vertical, and it's a foul a lack of fundamentals and discipline. And the irony is that DiVincenzo is good at keeping position with his hands off, but in an emergency situation, he has good hands. Here's an emergency with Biombo about to dunk, but Dante's swipe prevents it. Here the emergency is in transition, and he hits the ball off of none. Along with the eye test, every advanced number I've seen likes his defense. He stays alert, he's good off ball, and as we see here, he also has quick feet to stay with guards. As the numbers show here, he's also a tremendous rebounder. He grabs the third most rebounds per 36 minutes for players listed at 6'4 and under, and regardless of size, his rebounding positively impacts Milwaukee. He's just an active player. When he needs to, he'll box out, and here we see him box out Siakam. The 
The Bucks make a living off one of the Lopez's boxing out the center while a wing grabs it, and DiVincenzo high points these well. But he doesn't just grab uncontested rebounds, and here, look what happens in the pick and roll. Davis gets downhill, and instead of relaxing, Dante will switch onto Boucher and box him out. He's good at this, and here we see it again. He fights over two screens, and with Harris out ahead, he'll now switch on to the rower Simmons. This is called a veer back, and his tip out prevents a putback. On the offensive glass, he's the total package, athletic enough to sky high for tip-ins, and relentless with second efforts. I give him a lot of credit for embracing the role of a hustle player, and he consistently wins these 50-50 balls. A great natural nose for the ball. Outside of rebounding, he's a pretty well-rounded offensive role player. The biggest limitation now being his three-point shooting, where he's a below average 34%. And in his current role, this hurts because he mostly plays off ball. But he isn't a bad shooter, so teams do have to respect him. His release isn't slow. Plus, he makes up for it in other areas. He's a quality passer in the flow of the offense, and he's also a good cutter. He has a good feel for this cut. Lopez's drive gets stalled near the foul line and he picks up his dribble, and with all eyes on Lopez, this is a great time for a corner cut. Here it is again. Lopez can't create an advantage on Ibaka, and Dante is already cutting back door. Here Lopez shoots it, but now DiVincenzo is in position to grab a rebound, and here he knocks it off of Toronto. And that happens fairly often, where his cut leads to an offensive rebound. His tape is full of relentless second efforts. But where he really separates himself from some of the other backup wings such as Connaughton and Sterling Brown, is his ability to attack the rim and finish. He isn't asked to create much, but when he is, he can use his quick first step to get by slower defenders. A slower forward is switched onto him, and blowing by Bielitsa makes the defense pay for that switch. He's shooting 63% at the rim this year, which is in the 81st percentile for his position. He can finish with either hand off either foot and stride into finishes. This is exactly what the Bucks need from him. On the catch, he quickly attacks the closeout and then shows off his soft touch. He also helps his field goal percentage by being able to pass on the move. He's not super polished here yet, but when he drives and draws that second defender, he's patient enough to find the open man and not force something up. And if you're wondering, he does have the skip pass in his arsenal, and here his athleticism helps him throw one to Lopez. What a stud. Well, there you have it guys. DiVincenzo isn't a high usage scorer right now, but he makes winning plays on both ends, many of which don't show up in the box score. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.